Uh, I didn't stop recording, pa. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't stopped either. Firefox OS. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Firefox OS. Oh my gosh! All right, Firefox OS starting in three, two, one. Hey. Jeez, uh, Firefox OS. Okay, let's do this. My name is AG. <laughs> I'm Zhao. Because I, I just need... And we are our third world Linux. We discuss our life and technology in the... Con- uh, we are discuss Linux and our lives in the context of the third world. And right now, I'm so angry about Firefox OS. I've been angry for a week about Firefox OS. Well, technically... Okay, fine. Let me clarify. Technically, not about <coughs> Firefox OS as it is. It is a okay. I mean, I, I'll get to that later. But oh, just, oh uh, just, just, just a little bit. Uh, just, just a little bit behind the scenes. <laughs> Two weeks ago, you probably right. listened to us complain about net neutrality, right? Um, for us, uh, two minutes have passed. <laughs> Oh no! And don't worry, because I was I I, so I said in our social pages that we got ourselves some Firefox OS phones, and we got uh, ourselves Firefox yeah. OS phones. Dude, they were like twenty five dollars. Yeah, uh, full disclosure. Yeah, which is what they promised thirty twenty five dollars, which is what is promised. Um, full disclosure, we purchased the phones using our own wallets. We did not. Um, what do you call this? We 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 were not given anything. This is not a deal or anything. That's why it, it's our own wallets that we use to buy these phones. Not sponsored, in a, other words. Not sponsored, in other words. Um, just in the sake of full disclosure. And let me, before I start with how I think about Firefox OS, here's my current mobile phone situation. The reason why I got myself Firefox OS in the first place is because my Android 4.2, my phone that I was telling you guys, I, I think I talked about it on the show before, uh, got bonked. What happened was the, the, it was just muting down it and, and it was moving by itself. Not not physically, but the screen was like <laughs> clicking on things all over inside. It was moving by itself. Yeah. My yeah, golly yeah. gosh. Um and if you've been listening to, if you've been a long time listener, you know that I love that phone. I really, really dig that phone. But I brought it under uh in, in warranty. It's still under warranty, which is great, and I brought it to uh the service center and they're asking me five thousand two hundred and fifty pesos, which is around a hundred plus plus bucks, or around hundred and twenty bucks. Hundred twenty dollars to have it repaired. I bought that for around that same price, and they said that the faults of the phone was because um, uh, because the the phone was broken because it was my fault. And I was like, why this just suddenly acted up? And all of the problems I'm telling them is not my fault. So I told them screw it, and I did not, not I'm actually being a bad customer at them, and I'm really really sorry. It's just that their service is shit. <laughs> so, so the after, I didn't know their after sales was that shitty. Lo and behold, and, and it was actually nice because I was without a phone for a week, which is quite refreshing. I was a shitty person to be in a meeting with because, the, because everyone was paranoid. Is he not gonna show up? Eventually, I was really early in every meeting I showed up in. But, um, that aside, I decided to purchase a phone. <laughs> Zhao, uh, and so that, me, so, so that week, right? <laughs> so that yeah. week I was um walking around one of the malls next to school and I saw this uh th- this phone um for 999 pesos and uh it was the Cherry Mobile Ace which is a phone with Firefox OS on it so I was like hmm I've hmm. uh I've 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 significantly cut down on cigarettes it's time to treat yourself so it's like I, I should get this phone with with the money. Really, that I w- treat yourself. <laughs> really. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, fine. Um, it, Go on. It, it is. Um, it's it's a. Uh, it's it's what they encourage you to do, right? Like when you quit smoking, or when you yeah, right? Like like the money that you would have spent on cigarettes, you spend on something else, and that's like, what I did. Not, not necessarily splurge, but um, use it. You know, just uh, reward yourself with something. Yeah, so in my case, it was, hmm, I should try out this Firefox OS phone, and maybe we can, uh, a new you know, piece of tech. You know, e- e- eke an episode out about it, 
which we did. So I took a picture and I sent it to AG. I'm like, you jelly? And he was like, I should totally get that phone. And I was like, smiley face. And, um. <laughs> That should have been a sign. <laughs> that should have been a sign. <laughs> and, anyway. uh, and here we are. <laughs> Been living in Firefox OS for a couple of weeks. Two weeks, at least. Uh, at the time of recording, two weeks. Two, three weeks, yeah. Yeah, um, I, I've, I've, I think I had the phone like a week longer than you did. So. Yeah. So yeah. for you, it's probably mo- less than a month. Almost a month. Anyway. Jeez, man. Right, so, um, the good. Do we start with the good? Ah, Okay, let's let's start with the good. Let's start with the good. Because, um, when we start with the good, we're gonna have the bad. But when we take them both, uh, we'll have the the facts. (laughs) (laughs) When the world. Because when the world doesn't live up (laughs) to be living up to our dreams, man, it's not gonna live up to our dreams. But when the facts is all about us, we're gonna be enjoying this anyway. Uh, extended joke aside, <laughs> pushing it a little the good, too far. The good, yeah. yeah, the good for me. Uh, you first. Uh, what what is your good? I actually didn't list it down, but the good. Um, what I like about Firefox OS is the fact that there is a Firefox OS. It's 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 kind of <laughs> weird. It's it's like a recursive thing, but. Like, I like the idea, I like the idea that there's something out on the market that's breaking the monotony of Android iOS, or, um, in, in the third world, Android, right? Because, like, iOS really isn't a thing here. Like, that's the reason. It's an afterthought. Yeah. yeah. That's the reason I like it, because there's this idea, the, the idea that there's something there that isn't Android. I like, wow. And it's, it's more open. Than like development is more open than um, Android. That is actually my first. That is actually my first thing that I love about it. Aside, well, it's an offshoot of what you have, what you like about it. Because I was actually thinking also, what they do like about Firefox OS is the fact that it's a Firefox OS. <laughs> but they already said it. <laughs> um. Oh, uh, another thing that I like about it is mm. the fact that it runs on. On such terrible hardware. Like, it barely runs, but it runs. I admire it for that. I absolutely admire it for that. We're, we're gonna get to the bad day. We have so, uh, I'm gonna be so theory about the bad, but uh, the good, you know, what? Uh, the good that I wanna point out is when we talk about uh, the fact that it exists, is for me the fact that it's really open. And that openness is being fueled by the Firefox community. Uh, I checked the fire, local Firefox user base here in Manila, and they actually have some get-togethers. They teach people how to maximize, not the phone, but the OS, Firefox OS itself, and how you can integrate it to your life. And at the same time, they go to schools and do a roadshow on how to develop HTML5, if I'm not mistaken, that's the language it uses, right? How to develop HTML5 yeah, yeah, yeah. for Firefox OS. And I'm like, wow, okay, that is absolute, that for me is Wow. And I've always dreamed of localized apps, right? Everyone's thinking global, global apps, but I was always thinking of apps that should be, uh, let, let's make more localized content, right? Exactly. That, that, yeah, yeah, this, yeah. that this fits for this particular, you don't even have to sit, think city or just, I want to have an app for my school. Now a person can actually do that. I want to have an app for this class where I could distribute the lectures and whatnot, blah, 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 blah. Imagine if a professor, IT professor, goes to your class and, okay, um, first day of class, whip your phones out, your syllabus, your uh, all the requirements, all the readings, and the video presentations are already on the app. Like, whoa, and it's a web app. Third thing I like. So, see, I have many things I like. Um, Firefox apps are also web apps, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, they're, so, um, yeah. Like, how, uh... And you don't, yeah. That, that's um that, that that's that's another thing that I like. Uh Firefox OS is web native, which um like like when you when you develop for Android or iOS, you have to you have to throw it into like this little proprietary blob or whatever. Whereas with Firefox mm-hmm. OS, by definition, HTML is open. Right? Like you can exactly. never right? And um and well yeah, it's it's web native, so if you can develop a web app like you can develop 
a Firefox OS app. Again, really open, really easy to access. And at the same time, if it's a web app, and you know me, I'm a sucker for integration. <laughs> it's easier to integrate if you're just using web app after web app after web app. Yeah. Personally, at least, that, that was my experience. Uh, what else? Let's churn out all the good that we can churn out right now, so I'll be calm. <laughs> Actually, um, what I find another thing that I find good about it is, um, it is a very cheap Wi-Fi enabled phone, right? which is um, which which can be taken as a good thing and a bad thing at the same time. But I choose to see it as a good thing in the context of the third world, where um, where your average entry level office worker in Cebu makes something like six to seven thousand pesos a month. Mm-hmm. And he could have a Wi-Fi ready phone for less than or more or less a thousand pesos. Yeah, which is around twenty twenty five bucks, at least thirty dollars tops. And you have a counter for that later on on the band. You could say that on the band, um, because com- compared to the competition at its price point, CDR King re- have have eight hundred peso Android for a uh, not Android two point something two point two phones. That's the thing I like about Firefox OS in relation to that. Because you can at get least it. this is Um This is a higher price point though. Firefox OS is being sold here is a higher price point. Yeah, well it's it's being sold at a hundred pesos more expensive, right? Um yeah, Android like two point two hundred pesos. Right. Android two point two for all intents and purposes is abandonware. Right? Uh yeah. Technical yeah. Like like Android you're, like you're Android two point two. Like, like, if you look at Lollipop and Android, like, 2.x, you might as well be mm. looking at Halo and Prince of Persia. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And not even Halo 3 or Halo 4, the first Halo. <laughs> uh, Halo Combat Evolved. Anyway. What, uh, but the, yeah, so, the so, so, is, so it's like an updated, um, oh, no, good. Uh, the, the, your, your consumer who would buy a phone like that at that price point wouldn't know the difference. All they know is, oh, it's yeah. an Android phone. I'm gonna get it. Yeah. But if you get a Firefox OS phone, at least they, um, at, at least the consumer who is comfortable with a phone at that price point is safe from, um, all of the vulnerabilities that were neglected that once Android old, hit yeah. its three, like, it's three line. Uh, so, so, so by bringing up, by bringing up the price thing, I'm trying to transition us into the not so good. <laughs> Unless oh you still God. have more good. Uh, no, I, I'm trying to exhaust everything that is good. What, oh, uh, what do you think about the UI first? Uh, it's, 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 <laughs> um, <laughs> it is what it is, dude. It, it, it looks like a fork of Android, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Which it isn't, but it looks like a fork of Android. It's comfortable. It's, it's it's comfortable. It's familiar. It's sort of what you'd expect the phone to be. It's it's not doing anything insane. Um, which supposedly Ubuntu is gonna do something a little bit different, but like it's the same. I I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, uh, but in terms of the aesthetic, it is what it is. It's a thing. <laughs> it harkens me back to my favorite iOS. Um, what do you call it? iOS iteration. iOS 5. It feels like that to me. And it's my favorite, uh, iteration. Oh, by the way, for, we haven't told of what Firefox version we were using. We're using 1.3 because that was what was supplied in the phone. And that's, um, and, and that's the Firefox <laughs> OS version that is optimized for 128, uh, megabytes of RAM. Which. Yeah, not <laughs> the one for 1 gig. Cause 2.0 is optimized for 1 gig RAM, right? Yeah, and, and I'm sure, and I'm sure 2.0, uh, looks and feels a lot better than this. So I really can't, like. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure, yeah, but 1.3, personally, it harkens me back, and I like the term, I like to use the term harkens, harkens me back to, uh, iOS 5. And it's a great thing, because that's my favorite, mm, what do I call this? Uh, favorite iteration of iOS. Oh! I, I like, I like how it's being used, and I, I like everything. In, in the UI, because it's, I think it's, it's very simple to use. Uh, uh, going, going back, um, the, the fact, and this is, this is a testament 
to the Firefox OS community or the Firefox community. Um, the fact that we are running version 1.3 doesn't mean that it isn't current because it's got a maintainer. Yeah. Right? Um, Th- like, oh, that's such a great upside that they have for me. <laughs> right? You have a solid community back here up. Like, and, I and yeah, for I me, this is what it. Ubuntu should be striving for. That, that strong community base. Cause Android, cause like, when I saw that, oh, Google, uh, Firefox has a community. They have a headquarters somewhere in Pasing Tamo where they hold meetings. Not just about, of course, not just about Firefox. They're also doing the translation work of mm-hmm. translating Firefox into Tagalog, which is really great as well. So I look at, okay, so let's see what Google is doing, uh, the local Android community is doing with Google or Google doing with Android. We actually have a Google here in the country now. And it's Nick Nada Niente. Well, because, um, because, uh, because, because, uh, Android is, um, sort of, sort of open source. Like, it isn't open, open. Right? It is, yeah, open, yeah, look. We are open. And you can use it easily, or you could do what you want with it. Uh, there's still, well, not, not exactly. Like the way, um, there's still a big brother, right? There's the Google still acts like as a big mediator yeah. for well, whatever Android say, um, is gonna do. Uh, well, what's it? Like one of the criticisms of Android from the open source community is, um, you know how Android used to have their own messaging app, how they used to have all of their own apps, right? Like all of the old built-in yeah. Android apps were all of a sudden removed and replaced with Google Talk or whatever those apps Google were, integration. right? Integration. Yeah, right? Google integration. 100% Google integration. Right, right, but that's, um, but the thing is, the old messaging app, the old, uh, phone app, the old, um, contacts app, those were all open source apps. Google mm-hmm. removed the open source and replaced it with their own proprietary Google integrated apps. Right? So that's like, when, a, in turn, they could have just said, you could download this app, our Google app, and then, you know, you could delete the others. Uh, they didn't put it as the discretion of the user. They just outright remove it for every release. Yeah. But did, huh. Anyway. Um, well, that's kind of crappy. <laughs> right? Um, and, and like the way Google does their open source is, uh, described as Google throws their code over the fence. Like it's, it's not, yeah. it isn't like, uh, it's, it's, it's just for compliance. It isn't like in the spirit of open source. This is, you know, Android, but then at the same time, like they do have, um, you know, good open source initiatives, etc. But it simply isn't as open as Firefox OS. And going back to Firefox OS, that's what we love about it. Yeah, jeez, man, I really want to go to one of them meetings that they're gonna have because I really okay. We're, since we're gonna go to the bad right now, because I really need to understand. There are some apps that I can't. For the one week I was without a phone. I realize there are some apps that I can't live without. Viber. Number one is Viber. They don't have Viber. They do have Line. What do you call that? They do have something with Line. Uh, yeah. Line? Yeah, and, yeah. And line. The other, line and WeChat. They yeah. have uh, like substitutes because um, th- I think that Line's API is released and Firefox OS has uh, integration with Facebook and Facebook owns WeChat. So something like that. Oh, the, the Facebook so app the, looks um, like right, right. Facebook app looks like it was early 2000s <laughs> or mid 2000s I I'm saying like 2007 2008 around that time the Facebook app looks like that but right now they don't have apps yeah well um, which which what's it though? it's an easily solvable thing it's an actually, easy solvable thing because it's easy to develop for them well, actually the caveat why, to uh, uh well um go, yeah, go, before right. we continue the caveat to our not so good about um, Firefox OS as the software is that all of th- all of the not so good is because it's early days. So that's why that, that's why me yeah. that, that's why personally I'm using not so good because it's still early days and a lot of these a lot of the rough edges that we find are like easily fixable. Not not with the OS uh, and mainly not in the OS. It's how the seller implements the OS. <laughs> yeah, so so um like like for me the not so good is uh 
is 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 all the ru- well yeah the not so good for me are the rough edges which can easily be fixed so don't take this as us hating on firefox os um because heck i wanted to push further Personally, i wanted I to, to be like, further and compete <laughs> right like like if you listen to some of the earlier episodes of third world linux you will hear me talking about how i truly believe that firefox os will save the world like as between ubuntu and firefox os i'm like go ubuntu f- or firefox os I'm yeah like, we I'm had the prediction episode f- for that yeah i was like go firefox um that was that that that, that was my stand um and now it is here <laughs> <laughs> and and I'm actually really happy. Um, but, uh, so, so, so we're going to be talking about Firefox OS and, uh, what we don't think is good about it yet. And then after that, we're going to talk about the hardware. And that's where we're okay. going to. That- oh God. Oh my God. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have an aneurysm when you talk. I'm gonna pop veins. But, um, let's go back. Cause, um, the, the reason, like, look at how we talk about Firefox OS anyway. We want to push it further. Personally, I like what I said earlier. I want to go to the meetings and try to see if if I could still fit time in my busy, busy schedule to try and develop something for the phone. It's HTML5. Oh, I've dude. heard developer friends who can develop like, oh, HTML5 is easier to learn. La 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 la. You did C plus plus anyway back way back when, and 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 you know some of those things. Maybe it's time for you to go back and develop it. It's your own app. It's free. Like, don't tempt me, good sir. Don't tempt me. <laughs> yeah. So, dude, um, uh, co- cover one of their meetings. Like, if you have the time, man, co- cover one of their meetings for Third World Linux. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I mean, uh, double purpose, of course. I'm going to go show up there and tell them um, we do this podcast and whatnot. And at the same time, I just want to learn more about the phone. And if really I could just give my suggestions who knows I might meet a developer there who's working on something that I might want or something I might need so I could just give my thoughts on that person who knows like I just want to attend uh, I signed up for their email mailing list uh, so I'll have updates as of the moment their mails are regarding uh, translating Firefox into Tagalog not yet of the OS uh, and it's weird because I am a hardcore Google user but I'm liking Firefox OS why? Again, it's easily integrating into things. I downloaded my contacts using Gmail. Gmail's contacts. Which is, wow. I was not expecting that to happen. <laughs> so yeah, um, that's one downside for me is it, it, they lack the apps, but that could easily be solved. It's like the early days of a console launch, a uh, game console launch, where you have your system, but you don't have anything to use that system on. <laughs> so... There are substitutes. There's a native Twitter app. I haven't used it. I don't like having Twitter natively on my phone. Um, there is, uh, uh there's Facebook. I downloaded it to try. Oh god, which it's is, terrible. Uh, yeah, it looks like to, yeah, it looks terrible. Uh, oh, uh, the browser, man. The browser works well. The Firefox <laughs> it browser. Better work. It's kind of cool. <laughs> Cause I was, that's what I'm gonna say. It's kind of cool to see the Firefox, um, the Firefox OS app, like, ooh, down there, it is, it is, it, it is that. Uh, okay. I want to go to another downside for me, personally. Uh, they have to fix their marketplace. <laughs> yeah. Actually, hold up. I'm gonna, I am going to go over to my bag and grab my phone. Uh, this. Yeah, go ahead. I'm gonna talk yeah. about the. Yeah, I'm gonna talk about the marketplace and what I don't like about it. So yeah, because I, I, I know exactly what you're. I know exactly what you're gonna be saying anyway. <laughs> yeah, uh, my thing about the marketplace is it's just it's hard to search for things specifically in what you need in, when you you access the marketplace, and it's it's divided to what four, three, four categories, which for me is quite weird. When it, that's one of the things I like about um, Google uh, Store. Uh, the Google Store, you can easily sort out the apps or whatnot and separate it. What are the books? What are whatever? And what is it gonna fit in your apps? But sometimes the thing about uh, the Firefox Marketplace is you have your home, your games, and your tools, and your lifestyle. Like there are so many other categories, and at the same time, when I do a search term, when when I do a search, the thing I'm specifically searching for doesn't show up. <laughs> so again, it's it's. It's something that you could easily tweak, and it's 
it's not so much a deal breaker. Mm. Ooh, overall, Captain Rogers. Overall, <laughs> overall look of the of the marketplace is okay. It's just that I need to search the things I need to search. Yeah. Uh, like I, I can't I can't find the things I'm looking for. That's my problem. Like I want to have suggestions, but what it uh, what it has is features, not suggested apps. And I'm not sure if you like. I'm not sure, John, if you like Android style of having the curated, uh, what do you call that? The curated, uh, editor's choice apps. I'm not sure if you like that. I'm not sure if that might work for Firefox OS. Personally, I'm 50-50 about mm. it, but, cause we we're in the early days as well. Yeah. But I, I do hope, but I do hope, uh, like, the marketplace needs to be fixed. Um, uh, something that bugs me about, um, about the messaging. The messaging. Uh huh. Um, sorted I by can't, date. The, the, uh, no, it's, um, how, how do you, how do you tell what time the message was sent or received? <laughs> yeah, it's beside the message. Like, it is? You see there, yesterday and then the time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but then like, it's, it's got yesterday, the time, and then it's got like a bunch of messages under it, right? Oh, yeah. Like each message, what time did? <laughs> uh, yeah, right, right? not like not this? not each specific message was sent. Yeah, yeah, you don't have that. Right, so that's that's easily fixed. Um, the keyboard, I'm not a fan of the keyboard. But then, not a fan of the keyboard as know. well. Uh, uh, are they gonna come up with their Google's third party keyboard? keyboard? Probably. It's like Google's first keyboard or Android's first keyboard was terrible. So you know, yeah. <laughs> Swift key, man, Swift key. <laughs> swipe, 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 <laughs> swipe. Uh, I'm using Swifty anyway. Swifty is not free. Any anyway, off tangent stuff. <laughs> um, uh, you know, little little things. The the calendar doesn't show the actual date. Yeah, um, those are for, yeah. It only says one. <laughs> right. The, the the clock is stuck at ten ten or something. I don't know why. Yeah, I don't know why it's ten ten. Uh, my biggest beef though with OS that I'm not sure. I, ho- I hope it's still gonna get fixed in the future. It's not optimized for dual sims. Mm. It's not optimized for dual sim cards. I know you've used a phone with dual sim cards before, right? Yeah. And my yeah. phone was dual sim cards as well. Uh, at the top, like when you scroll down, you can have the option of which phone to use for calling, for data, for, for messaging. Here, I have to navigate all the way to the settings just to fix all of those. Yeah, it's one set and then forget, but sometimes you, you tend to, like, um, because of the crappy hardware, <laughs> because of the crappy hardware, uh, I need to restart and remove the SIM cards and whatnot again. And oh, dude, so, something Ooh. that um, something that I forgot to mention in the um, something that I love, the do not mm-hmm. track option. Oh yes, oh yes, oh, amazing. Oh yes, imagine that they have that uh, they have that option. The do not track, like your first. And, and, and it isn't buried anywhere. It's, 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 it's one of your, it's, it's one of the first level, um, settings. Or whatever you yeah. call it. Right? Like, you don't have, it, it isn't deep in any of the menus. So, yeah, there. I like that, by the way. <laughs> Do not track. Uh, oh my god, I wish Android would have that. That's <laughs> something I wish Android would have. But, uh, there, I don't see any, personally, I don't see any deal breakers. Most of our concerns are with the UI. Most of the concerns are, are just the apps. As I was saying, really don't, I don't really have huge blunders or huge deal breakers. There are some things I don't get. <laughs> but speaking of net neutrality and crappy internet connections, um, dear listener, you're not going to hear how that call dropped. <laughs> and for the sake of openness <laughs> and accountability, uh, the, fo- the call dropped. Uh, uh, eh. Um, we like to show our seams. We like to go behind the scenes here, Channel 14. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, moving on. Uh, so I was, yeah, but moving on, back to the bad side of, uh, like the things not so good, um, is there, there are little, most of the things are beef is the little things that can easily be fixed. Like, I don't get the, I'm thinking of at the uh. home, home, home screen. I don't get it. And, and the, the reason why I wanted to draw the phone, for the first time until I got used to it. Every time I click the home button, <laughs> I just want to throw the phone away. It buzzes. But it was submitted as a bug. Damn right? thing buzzes. Somebody listed it as a bug. Somebody was working on it to 
have it toggleable. <laughs> like if you can have it set like at a certain specific whatever situations that when you press home button, it will vibrate, or you could outright permanently remove that. Like mm. that was driving me nuts. Ah, it's driving me nuts. Uh, even up to now, it's driving me nuts. <laughs> it's like a thumb massage. Like, <laughs> yeah, but it's weird though. I've come to get uh, used to it. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but yeah, uh, I don't get that. I'm thinking of personally. I don't get it. Mm. The 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 notifications are at the bottom. What do you call that? The the easy toggle. Pop, the toggle buttons are at the bottom when you swipe down, and nothing happens when you swipe up. So I don't know. There's there's a lot of room for improvement in the UI, and we're using 1.3 anyway. And, and and personally, I'm excited to see what will happen to the phone because like we're OG. We're using the phone as it is right now for the intended market or for the intended place or location where it is. And I really am okay yeah. with it. That's why, that's why, you know what? I told myself, I can use this phone. But, hmm. <laughs> let's go to the ugly. So, so, well, well, before that, um, that's the, um, so, again, it's, it's, we actually really like Firefox OS and everything we say about Firefox OS in terms of the software comes from a place of, of love. And, um, <laughs> comes from a place of, like... That's what we do things for. We do it for love. <laughs> yeah. And, um, this, uh, the I'm thinking of thing. Um, I, I can see where it is. It's, it's, it's sort of like, um, it's sort of like what Ubuntu is trying to do with Unity and their dash. How, like, you have one little search bar and it searches everything. Like, I, I can see that that's what Firefox OS is trying to do as well. Uh, yeah. Mmm... So should we go to the ugly? Good God, this this phone. Well, first off, they didn't have the orange one. I wanted to get the orange one because it's Firefox. But the store it that I went orange, to, orange, right? The store that I went to didn't have the orange one. I only have white. They only I, have white in my in the store that I went to. I got the blue one. I want to go a close second. Yeah, I got a white. <laughs> yeah. It's a close second. I got white for Christ's sake. I never use white phones. All my devices are all has to be black. But what? Jesus. Anyway, um, the hardware is utter shit. <laughs> Pile of turds. Pile of turds. The hardware is utter turds. That's why I admire the operating system even more to be able to work with that hardware. Oh, good God, that hardware. The only rewarding thing I want to say about the hardware is it's the size, the 3.5 inch screen, the size mm-hmm. is quite okay to hold. Not even great. Okay to hold. And the speakers are extremely loud for something that's small. That's it. That's it. Everything else is utter shit. The earphones, man. The earphones <laughs> that came with this phone. Terrible. A huge circumference. It's terrible. Not even the sound. You can't even put that in your ear. Jeez. Um, in, what, what was it? Cherry Mobile's apps? Fucking useless. <laughs> Jeez, man. Um, actually, what, what I'm going to say is the battery life is really good, but that's because it's only got no. fucking 2G. <laughs> yeah. What I'm gonna say about the battery life is the fact that I don't really use it that much anyway. It's pretty much just a browser, a phone for call and text messages. Why? I don't have the apps I need in there. I, I tried, I, I, and here's something, uh, I'm not sure if it's the phone, the OS, or whatever. I tried downloading, um, a reader app, I'd call that. Yeah, RSS reader app. And, didn't work. Downloaded the, their Waze substitute called Here Maps. Mm-hmm. It took me a week to be able to download it properly, because it wasn't downloading properly. Um, so I'm not sure if those are the problems, the OS, the app, or the phone. It's not making me download the apps I need. So, again, going back to the battery life, I'm using it as a fairly, really basic phone. Hmm. But I could see, I could see the fact that, you know, I think it is, it has, it's 1,200 megahertz. Uh, my older phone has 2,000. The tablet I'm using to talk to you now is 4,000. So, eh. um, yeah, I'm looking at, um, milliamps. Um, Why did I say megahertz? Milliamps. Sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at, um, the, the specs of, of of the phone, um, uh, uh, 
uh, one gigahertz single core, 128 megabytes RAM, uh, 256 megabyte ROM, uh, 480 by 320 resolution, two megapixel camera. Uh, it's only 2G. No What's notification int- light. <laughs> What's interesting though is, uh, it, it was initially built to run Android 2.3, gingerbread. Yeah. Uh, this the gingerbread, uh, there's an Ace, Cherry Mobile Ace, that still has the gingerbread thing. Really? Yeah, they still sell it, I guess, if I'm not mistaken. Huh. I think, if I'm not mistaken, that's one of the cheapest smartphone offerings of Cherry Mobile. That's an Android phone, because this is, because this is like the cheapest smartphone. Like, yeah. I, I straight up asking, is that the cheapest yeah. smartphone? Like, yeah. Yeah. Right, who? That, that's their cheapest Android, quote unquote. That's the cheapest Android. Actually, one if, seven most likely. Um, if if we were to if, if we were to put um the gingerbread uh Ace phone uh up against the Firefox OS Ace phone, how do you think it would stand up? Like 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 would we be hating on it as much? Performance? I'm I'm not. We never. We we should have. Well, we don't have the phones. So we don't have. An extra couple thousand bucks to purchase just the Ace for testing. But personally, the fact that the Firefox OS is new mm-hmm. uh, is the whole thing we like about it. Will the, will we hate on the hardware? I'm not sure. It depends on how the hardware fits well with the software. Hmm. I guess if I'm assessing it right, and at the same time, we do know that it's not a good idea to still be to 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 buy a phone that is running gingerbread at this day and age. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Abandonware, abandonware. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's no Android community to support gingerbread anymore. Like, gingerbread for life? No. <laughs> You're not going to be like that. Well, let's see. Android gingerbread. Huh. I'd be surprised if there's a gingerbread for life community. But, um... <laughs> The hardware of the phone, like the, f- the camera is a sad excuse of a camera. Not even trying to attempt anything there. Um, oh wow, that's, wait, wait. That screen is, okay. Interesting. Um, gingerbread won't die apparently. Uh, cause that's how they're gonna counter all these new things. Uh, no. It is because manufacturer, uh, because, because, because people just stuck with gingerbread. Sort of like, sort of like XP. This is this is Android's sort of XP. Or like PS2. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's Gingerbread Android's is XP or uh, PS2. Yeah. Anyway, um, I I wouldn't know, right? Because like, uh, it's and and, and I guess this is where the or where, where where your argument will come in of um the counter to you get what you pay for, because that's I absolutely hate. Yeah, that, that's I exactly what people say. You get what you pay for. Yeah, and and. Like, I, I, I've said it in very, I, I think I should use the term. And when we were chatting about this is that it's as if they didn't treat us as human beings. <laughs> that there was no sense of decency in our existence as people. Because there are times that the phone just doesn't want to respond. There are times that the dates get messed up. And I'm sure it's the phone. It's not the OS. Oh, that's, that's the OS. That's the OS. Really? Yeah. Your dates also get messed up? It's a bug. Sometimes your date is at 1980 or 2062. I think that's a known bug. Oh, okay. So I thought it was a phone. Okay, at least there's that. Huh. Save your ass this time. But um, how I look at the hard way they put in, and, and I, I'm not sure, is it because I'm a power user of a smartphone or a smart device? I'm not sure. But how I look at this is Cherry Mobile pretty much just wanted to be in front of tech newspapers. Cherry Mobile mm. just wanted to be in the headline. That we have a Firefox phone. And that's it. No effort whatsoever. I don't see any updates being rolled or released for it. Um, their, their salespeople have, haven't have the slightest idea of what the phone is. The first thing, you know what the first thing that the, the salesperson, like the sales lady, who, when he, she opened up the phone, skipped the entire freaking tutorial. Like, I was supposed to read that. <laughs> I kind of didn't scream at her, but I wanted to read that. Skip the entire tutorial. And she was pressing on the right side of the circle, the home screen. 
So he's pressing on the right side of that to go back home. Like, mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think that's God gonna do anything. She said, oh, not used to it. I asked her, did you get any training or background on this? They just have like a fa- pamphlet of the run through of the features and whatnot. I'm like, huh, that's it. So they're not making a push for it. They're not segmenting as it stands. Well, fine. This came out in December at the price of 1,000 pesos actually. And it's just, at the time of recording, it's just March, mid-March. So we're just three months in. And I ask her, are there people buying the phone? You're the first one, sir. In how many months? In the, ever since it came out. I'm like, huh. I don't see any advertising push. It's just the tech blogs. So I'm pretty sure those who have Firefox phones are just tech bloggers as well. <laughs> it's, 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 it's quite sad if this is the first Firefox phone. It's not leaving a great impression. And Cherry is not doing anything about it. And I doubt they do anything about it. It's so sad. It's so sad. If, 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 Cherry, if that is Cherry's motivation. I want to give them the benefit of the doubt, but I don't know, what's their point? That's what I want to ask them. Why did you go Firefox OS in the first place? Are we going to see more support for it? Are you going to do anything about it? Or, or again, they're going to go with what you see is what you, what you, you get, what you pay for. You want a smart, the cheapest smartphone that you can have? Here's Firefox OS. But what's the first thing a consumer would do in this country? With Firefox OS, get Facebook number one. Get some sort of app, which which at least it has. But if he if that person comes from another Android, uh, a different Android device, and sees the f- Facebook here, it's gonna go iffy a bit, right? Hmm. So you're like, mm, it's there but not there. And then mm, the hardware is just too freaking mediocre. Well, m- maybe it's a good so, thing though. Like, like, maybe it's a good thing that, um, that the response has been lackluster. Because at least, at, at least, um, we don't come across looking like idiots to the general consumer, you know? Like, right. uh, because if, if they did do like this huge marketing push and, um, it was on this hardware. Oh, yeah. That's, right? that's, that's harsh. That's right? harsh, actually. But what I would prefer though is if they had segments. Yeah, yeah. Like, like there was this, um, th- there is a Firefox OS phone in Japan that's like a high end, dude. When I saw it, I was like, Whoa, exactly. This is that's what I, I was wanted. like, uh. pushing for. They don't need to be ten, or like $300. They could have the $100, uh, smartphone, an Android equivalent. Just put Firefox OS in that one. Then have this one. Just two options. So you can have something you can push. Yeah, yeah, they have a... Like, well, fucking their high, high end, end is 256 megabytes of RAM, dude. <laughs> What's it? Like mid-market, They're, um, something. They, they, they do have two. They do have two versions of it. One has 128 really? megabytes of RAM. The other has... Yeah, the other has 256. <laughs> Again, mediocre at them. It's like, oh, we have a surplus of a bunch of Ace phones. What are we going to do about it? Let's put Firefox OS. Let's change the packaging a bit of the phones. Put the Firefox sticker and the Fox, of course. Then push it out. Um, we have a bunch of crappy earphones. Let's put it in. You get what you pay for. No sense of human decency and human respect, man. <laughs> Whose ears are the circumference of these earphones, man? I'm really sorry, but just... <laughs> ah, I do hope for the best, though. I do hope they could just have segmented properly. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. Me, me personally, I'm glad that it didn't make like a big, I'm glad it didn't make a big splash. Because if it did make a big splash, we'd be screwed. (laughs) No, if they made a big splash with this one, it's doom. It's doom. And that is why, and this is why I admire Android. They made a big splash here with Android One. Oh. With the phone. Quad core phone at around five thousand, like four, four, four nine or something, four seven, five thousand pesos. Quad core Android one, like for me, that's a big splash. But you know, <laughs> Android one, yeah, <laughs> that's a different uh, third world treatment altogether that we have to do if we can get our hands on an Android one. Uh, so for podcasts and stuff, head over to channel fourteen dot com. Uh, twitter.com slash channel14 give us a tweet or 
Twitter.com slash Third World Linux, where I regularly do some and announce some stuff on episode. Follow us and track us there. If you want to support the show, uh, go to I our website, child14.com. You should have the Amazon affiliate links there and, you know, buy something. Uh, email. Email us at... Uh, uh, contact at channel14.com. Uh, or we you know. your feedback. Yeah. Yeah. Our messages on Twitter and Facebook and on our Google Plus pages. Uh, we value your feedback and we want to hear what you have to say. And if you have any suggestions, feel free to, you know, what do you like about your Firefox phones? Right? 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 Yep. If you have one. Yeah, how is it like in, if you're from Japan especially, how do you like the high end ones? <laughs> <laughs> or the ZTE Open. Yeah, I heard the ZTE Open. Anyway. <laughs> or the, the, the Geek's phone or whatever it's called. I, I, I don't particularly like the Geek's phone when I look at it. But yeah. mm-hmm. uh, what else? What else? What else? Uh, we'll see you Cheers. at the uh, off tangent. Alright. My internet. Simple as that. Yeah. Run Brood Star at six. Uh, Brood Star. Brood War at sixty <laughs> frames per second. HD it up. Still put it in two D perspective, but animations. Keep the animations, but like just make them HD. That's gonna save esports. Yeah. Uh, the whole sick BJ Star League season two. Our Protoss guys are Shuttle, Jehu, and Lucifer. The Terrans are Mind Watching. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> hero and Zero. Uh, oh, guys are gonna lose. <laughs> They're gonna lose, man. They're gonna lose. Uh, hero I, I, and I Zero? haven't seen. I haven't seen Brood War in so long. I mean, that's why I've been asking. I've been craving to watch Brood War for so long because I know we have the minor leagues. We don't have like anything like, <laughs> related, <laughs> most likely. In his last. 10 in his last 10 ZVP uh, yeah last 10 ZVPs uh, 0 1 9 of them <laughs> <laughs> Jayhoon man gonna break the streak <laughs> uh, Jesus Christ let's see hero wow this guy actually pl- uh this guy used to play StarCraft 2, I think. Who? Hero? I don't know. Well, the thing about... well, uh, uh, Hero. There are so many, like, pro gamers with the tag Hero, though. Like, there's, there's yeah, a Hero on Team Liquid. Yeah, this is not the Hero. And... Yeah, not, not no, that No, this one, Hero one. is the Hero... Yeah, this is the Hero that is Hero. Yeah, yeah, the Hero that is Hero. Huh. Let's <laughs> <laughs> see, the... the... According to Team Liquid, the player with the highest ELO um, mm-hmm. among the Brood War amateur players, amateur because like they aren't playing StarCraft too. Yeah, Killer C. Oh, um, Killer C. Mong Bisu, Savior. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, he can. He's bad Kespa. He's oh, no, no, bad for life in Kespa. Well, that that was the ELO peak. Sorry, that was the ELO peak. Ah, oh, okay. Um, the current ELO. Oh, okay. Uh, I thought, C- okay. okay, I thought, I thought Savior was playing again. Jeez, man. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, right now, our ELO, uh, C mine zero Bisu sack. <laughs> it's kind of nice. In, in, in. Oh, dude. Um, over, mm. over a thousand Linux games on Steam. Now? Like, who broke a thousand? Yeah, like, yeah, right like, now. Wait, wait. Like, why am I not checking? Well, like, I like, don't, haven't gamed in a long time in Steam. Yeah, yeah, like last week, I think, or two weeks ago. Like a thousand Linux games on Steam. Fun times, then. It's a big deal, because some of those are AAA, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, Metro, Borderlands, yeah. or Metro, and... Yeah. And uh, lots and lots of Kickstarter projects and indie devs are resorting to supporting mm-hmm. Linux as well. Hmm. A lot of uh, a lot of it has to do with um what's what's the name of that uh the Unity engine because like yeah, Unity, Unity has you know 
export to Native Linux. Support. Yeah, uh, it's easier because again, it's Unity engine, uh, and 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 I think they see the viability in the platform of, of supporting Linux gaming because of the Steam box, right? Because it's gonna transition there sooner or later. Uh, I think. Gabe Newell's plans didn't come into fruition with regard to the Steam box. Of course, they're not going to openly admit it. They got the hype they wanted, but not the hardware they wanted to deliver. Or the experience, at least, that they wanted to deliver. And they are very experience-oriented, these people. So, we'll probably see it in the near future. In the middle of the console life cycle. And prediction! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, Miko, when he was here, was... Uh, Ironic Gamer uh, was uh, asking me, like, so what do you think would happen with uh, the three titles of Portal and uh, Half-Life? Oh, okay, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he asked, did he ask you that as well? No, no. Because uh, what, he, what he, he asked me, like, oh, what, she, what, what do you think would come out first? Uh, Half-Life 3 or Portal or, or Left 4 Dead? I'm like, no. First thing I think would come out first is Portal 3. Because it's easier to play with Portal 3. Mm. Not not play in the sense like you pretty much play. Portal Three could be accessed or played by almost any demographic. A oh, a friendly puzzle, pa- a deceptively friendly and <laughs> kid friendly <laughs> puzzle platformer. Deceptively, um, but what Portal's mechanics does is it easily shows off the Source Three engine. It will show it off like nothing else, better than Half Life Three will. Oh, yeah. Because that actually the makes a lot of sense. Have, exactly. Because the problem they have with Half-Life 3 is they have to iron out that story. At first, it was just a platform to show off the Source engine. But then Half-Life 3 storyline got really well. <laughs> uh, really good. So, you know, that's a problem. And the last thing I told Nico that would come out of that 3 series is Left 4 Dead. Hmm. Because the competition and the saturation... Uh, they pretty much kicked off their own genre. Multiplayer co-op, first-person multiplayer co-op. Your Evolves, your Titanfalls, all of them like have that. No, no not Titanfall. But your, wasn't that your, like wasn't that Call of uh, Duty's fault? Yeah, no, Titanfall was Call of Duty. But I'm saying Evolve, and I'm thinking of another game. I forgot a game that where, where pretty much the concept is all of you are taking down a huge boss. Co-op is Left 4 Dead, and zombies are so much in trend in gaming so I'm pretty sure they're ironing out the mechanics a bit and how to be unique and how to stand out yeah I'm sure that's what they're doing like oh so personally I'm excited of what Steam would do and uh oh Miko's prediction is actually really nice he thinks that Half-Life 3 would have VR support like oh, oh. that's why it's gonna be delayed a bit Portal will show off the engine Half-Life 3 will show off VR and everything's gonna be combined in Left 4 Dead 3. I'm like, interesting. Interesting. Imagine playing Left 4 Dead in VR. I wouldn't because I hate VR. <laughs> I just wanna sit down and have the controller on hand or keyboard and mouse on hand and just play games, man. Actually, I wouldn't mind. No, actually, I, th- I think the game that would do really well on VR is Portal. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, not for me. I'm gonna be dizzy. Yeah, I know, like, but like, 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 I- like within five minutes of playing Portal on VR, I know I'd be throwing up because like I get kind of nauseous playing Portal, <laughs> like on a regular screen as, as it, it is. is. Yeah, <laughs> but like I-, I would imagine like people that have um you know more tolerance for like vomity stuff, like I'm sure they would enjoy Portal on like an Oculus. Here's what I would prefer though for that VR thing, if I don't need to move my head. Uh, I want to be Stevie Wonder when it comes to VR. Yeah, fine. I want that full immersive experience that's the only thing I see is that world. But if you can make it an option that I don't need to move my head just to turn or look around, I'm going to be good with VR. Hmm. Right? 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 Yeah. Hmm. Huh. <laughs> oh, dude. Tomorrow for... um For... It's, it's weird. Tomorrow is going to be one of those weird days that like work and school stuff converge because uh justice scarpio of the supreme court is going to be one of the keynote speakers at the 
one of one of the well, she's going to be the, one of the keynote speakers at the IBP summit, which is going to be held in Cebu, and um, like the office is going to be covering it. So, like, wow, like the paper is going to be covering sure. it, and we have like an exclusive not sure interview. If, uh, here's the thing, though, not sure. Uh, you know where if we could talk about this on air or in recording, you do know where Norm works now, right? Nope. He works for Filmstar. Really? Yep. Martin. Huh? Okay, Martin. Sales and stuff. Martin is affiliated with When in Manila. Right. I am affiliated with, you know, where I'm affiliated, the website where I write for. Yeah, yeah. And you are affiliated with a certain news company, right? Yeah. So legally speaking, we can't all work together. Because <laughs> we're Did- all working for a media company. <laughs> No, we totally can, dude. We totally oh, can. You can this do is, that. This I is, thought this is freedom ethics. of association. Ah, oh, okay. I thought journalistic ethics dictate that we shouldn't be collaborating on certain things. I'm like, screw that. <laughs> nah, dude. Like, no, we're not collaborating when it comes to news. Yeah, well, even I, then, I always tell them, I write lifestyle, guys. I write lifestyle. But even even then, though, like we even then, like we should because like we have very good relationships with, um, with the other. We we have very good relationships with the newsrooms of other, uh, papers and other news like, agencies, websites. Yes. Yeah, other other news agencies. Like we have very good relationships with them. It's like, oh yeah, that's where you work now. Like, oh yeah, yeah. you know. So. No, it's, it's, even it's perfectly okay. Yeah, dude. Like, it's not because journalistic ethics dictates that. <laughs> well, well, how, how, how would journalistic ethics dictate? Like, no. No, I'm not sure. Journalism is at a crisis, right? Well, photojournalism at least is a huge crisis right now. I, 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 I guess, like, companies would be not so, well, that's that's the thing, though, because like the the, the way the, the the way journalism is now, um, the the way like the quote unquote news industry now is um, is is nothing like it was. Uh, there, there's no such thing as breaking news anymore. So yeah, like it's first tweeted first news later. Yeah, so like the reason that like newsrooms used to be like super antagonistic towards Close each other. Off. Yeah. Yeah. It's because like, hey, I have the scoop. Competing. I have yeah. It's it's who who whoever can get the scoop out first, right? <laughs> but like nowadays that doesn't happen anymore. Um nowadays like the um the, the the value in in journalism comes from the quality of your analysis. And uh you, you get quality analysis from interacting with other journalists. Because you get more mm-hmm. perspective, right? So, you know, um, it, it, instead of this antagonistic bring everybody down, um, I, I think the way it should work now, and I guess the way it is working now, is everybody collectively brings it the level like, of journalism up. Well, because the thing is, you know, it's struggling <laughs> around the world. Journalism, even in photojournalism, it's struggling. Yeah. Not even to stay relevant, just to, you know, Exist as an entity. <laughs> huh. And that's kind of heartbreaking because if, I mean, media is already having a hard time doing its thing. And now that, you know, they're losing the capacity to just operate the day to day basis, darn. Mm. <laughs> yeah. And the, it's, it's, it's funny, right? Because the internet, um, uh, because the internet doesn't have as much money for content producers mm. overall. It's yeah, it's a weird. Uh, the internet really broke a lot of stuff. Uh, uh, it's, something. It's, something it's, oh no, go ahead. And it's something that personally, I'm not sure how it could be fixed. Because I I don't see the Patreon thing that people are pushing for. Right now, there's a reason why Channel 14 is not on Patreon. Because I don't see it as a sustainable way. And People we only have, like, work. 14 listeners. We only have 14 <laughs> listeners, granted. But we have 14 listeners give us... Yeah. We have 13 listeners, given 
But even so, if the 13 listeners gave $100 a month, and I'm assuming, I'm not asking, that's a th- uh, well, that's 1300 a month that we could use to, you know, heck, with that money, I could fly to Cebu and we could record. <laughs> we could record, like, a three-day marathon recordings and then just go back here. But that is not, is not the type of money that flows in. And I don't see people committing to $300 a day, uh, like that amount of money. Or, like, I still feel iffy about Patreon and those things. Or GoFundMe or those things. Even Kickstarter. Cause Kickstarters and Patreon all rely on a promise. Right? Yeah. And, 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 and that is, uh, that for me is weird. I don't want, people i don't want to give people a promise i want to give them a product um well i, I don't know with, with with patreon at least when it comes to like podcasts youtube videos etc uh i i would i i would think that patreon is um a a good source of funding um in in the sense that uh pe- people can pay directly for the content creators that they like and encourages the content creators yeah. to create content. Exactly. Which is for me the best thing about Patreon. Yeah. So there, but then, um, but th- that's a funny thing though. Like the internet when, um, in, in relation to, uh, media outlets, um, newspapers, magazines, etc. Uh, we, we were doing a SWOT analysis, uh, a SWOT analysis. And, um, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say this. Uh, on, on the podcast, but uh, one of the threats in the SWOT analysis, like like in the past, th- that that was always like the direct competition, right? It was always that paper, that magazine, that 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 was like the um that 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 was the threat, right? Now, the mm-hmm. threat in that SWOT analysis is Google. Why? Because uh, the 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 threat in the SWOT analysis is Google and Facebook, because that's where all the ad revenue is going. No. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, right. not, it doesn't even flow to the providers and new sites. Yeah, so say, like, um, so say, like, uh, right now I'm looking at a Facebook page that has a sponsored Globe ad on it. And, um, that's where advertisers are throwing their money at, uh, quote platforms, right? And, um, but not the content providers anymore. It, it, it's simple math, though. Advertisers will go to where the people are. And where do people go? <laughs> the two yeah. things. The two major news sites. Uh, the two major websites on planet Earth. It's Facebook. Facebook and Google. And freaking, mm. Yeah, Facebook. Well, technically speaking, it's still YouTube. It's Google is just a search page. It's well, yeah, Google is just really in the business of information. It's YouTube and Facebook. And yes. it's, it's, it's kind of disconcerting that actually... Not disconcerting. I, I'm not sure how this is bad. But your number one website is Facebook. Your, num- hey, your number one search engine is Google. Your number two search is freaking YouTube. People use YouTube to search for things. I'm like, okay. So, <laughs> and people will go, like, uh, advertisers will go to where the people are. Personally, yeah. YouTube, YouTube is not enough. YouTube is not, en- like, YouTube revenue is not enough for people, for content creators. Yeah, Facebook exactly. Revenue it's, it's, it's weird. Is absolute bullshit. And yet, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's not it's sustainable. Weird. We're not making, yeah. It's, it's We're weird. We're not um, making a sustainable content, future. uh, content providers, um, you know, your, your, uh, Newsweeks, your Time magazines, these, these guys, um, the, it's, 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 it's interesting to think that the death of the newspaper isn't going to be because of the availability of the information on the internet, but it's going to be death by middleman, whereby the middleman is Facebook and Google. The thing is, though, uh, capitalism will prevail or will, will go on, and, and, and the current model will die, and somebody will find a new type of model for it. Yeah, because because um, the current model is broken in the same way that the old model was very broken as well. <laughs> because you had but to take right into now, consideration, uh, you know. Yeah, right now somebody oh, will God. compete. Somebody would compete, yeah. and somebody would would mm, I don't know. Somebody would come up with something. I'm pretty sure it could be us. It could be someone else. Could be it's already probably in the works right now. Not that's gonna in, fix uh, everything. 
not in a non-net neutral environment. Yeah, not in a not in a net non-net neutral non-net neutral environment. But how are it's not even taking down Facebook or Google, but providing advertisers the solution that your advertising money would reach far more people in a far better impact by not resorting to Facebook ads or Google Analytic ads. That's so sort the, of that's like the a challenge. It's it's yeah yeah so 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 it's like um like I, I'm beginning to think that ads on Facebook um like like like. What was it? When, That's on Facebook when people, or the new billboards. Yeah, exactly. People become desensitized to them. Um, fuck it. And yeah, pretty much. And yeah. and here's the thing about YouTube ads. Five seconds. Adver- those videos have five seconds to get my attention so that I won't click skip to the next. And yeah. people who are learned in the internet have ad blockers. So <laughs> everybody is making a very not so friendly, not so profitable online environment. <laughs> Like in mo- yeah. that's why people tend to flock mobile because at least in mobile you don't have ad blockers that I'm familiar with that I know. Of. If there's an ad, you pay ninety nine freaking cents to have that ad removed <laughs> for that app option, right? <laughs> like there's a reason why the Flappy Bird creator apparently at the heyday of Flappy Bird rakes in fifty thousand dollars a day. Because a little ad on top. <laughs> because there's a little ad on top of a poor Clash of Clans. <laughs> uh. and, you know, somebody will hopefully show or, and, and, and as everyone is moving towards the experiential advertising model or, or communication model, because people still think about, you know, billboards and stuff. I mean, billboards are utterly useless. That's why, what's our more effective forms of ads in newspapers? It's not the, you know, huge print ad. Uh, or, or the lack thereof of the app screen. Hello. Hello. Yeah. The, the most of the concerns Hello? are from the app screen. Hello. Hello. No. No, you're not gone. No. 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 Hello. 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 Hello.